Now clear your minds, for we already know what scares you. We have from the very beginning. We know too much already. You're right. A world without Patreon.com slash Wasseskast Productions would be an absolute nightmare. No more bonus episodes. No more early access. No more exclusive content. Just thinking about it. Don't worry. Patreon.com slash Wasseskast Productions is still here. Still very much alive. Now don't wait. Walk towards the light and enjoy the show. This podcast was recorded over an ancient Indian burial ground. We scored a hell of a deal, and I was able to get the, uh, a better touch with my distant relatives. I don't see what the big deal was, honestly. I'm your host, AJ Wiseska, and I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Metters, and our special guest this week is, once again, Derek McDermott. No silly names this week, because I couldn't really work up with the characters we had in there. They just didn't have a good enough name for me. There was a guy in the movie named Ryan, though. I mean, that kind of worked a little bit. And he's black! It, it's like it's <laughs> made to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Fun fact, I was named after that guy. I really wasn't. I really was not. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Ryan, this movie was made eight years before you were born. I could believe it. No. <laughs> I, I think it's. A, I refuse. I think it's an. I think we're gonna confirm this as a fun fact of this film. <laughs> fun fact of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you want to follow us on more bullshit shenanigans, you can follow us on Patreon, YouTube, Pippa, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, TuneIn, Podcast Addict. If you want to Google us to find us in other places, you'll probably find us in those places. I don't know where they all are. We 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 spread out far like a like a virus or a fungus or those things in in game zombies. I guess we've we spread out like zombies. Um, the intro song for this week is Lavender Town, a remix of that, one of many that we're pulling out. Hopefully I have enough remixes to actually fill the season. If not, then you might get some repeats. We'll see. Uh, today is the episode. Are you guys ready for the, this week's uh, spectacular film? I actually... I'm, I hate to be that guy. Yeah? With your intro. It's technically not an Indian burial ground. It's, it's just, just cemeteries. It's just, it's cemeteries. just cemeteries. I mean, sure. They, they, don't bring nat- they don't bring natives into it until the sequel... And that's like missionaries and natives. I mean, okay. Well, yeah, got, it's just a cemetery. It's just a normal cemetery. Okay, you got me on a technicality, but still, the, the he jo- does it. Like the dude does explicitly say, "Well, it's not. It's not ancient burial grounds." <laughs> I mean, we checked. <laughs> I mean, we don't know how good he checked though. He could have just been like, "Yeah, look at the paperwork. It's it seemed fine." Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Ancient bodies. Indians don't don't worry, worry about that. We'll we'll leave that coffins. Out. We'll leave that out. <laughs> Uh, well, for those who are just joining us and don't know what the hell we're talking about yet, you're, we're near the end of Halloween 2020. Uh, I know, saying this in June sounds weird. Uh, it's been a frightening year for many reasons. Let's pivot away from straight horror to 1982's Poltergeist, written by uh, Michael Grace and Mark Vector, and written and directed by Steven Spielberg himself. Uh, this film made a worldwide total of $77 million, which is just over seven times what it cost. So many sevens. So, so I see you're on Team Spielberg. Uh, <laughs> technically, he wasn't the director. <laughs> technically, but I'm... I'm Toby I, Hooper. <laughs> technically, Wait, but... Who, who was the director, actually, then? Toby Hooper. Ah. See, I, Spielberg was on the set every day. Contract, <laughs> contractually, he wasn't allowed because he was currently shooting E.T. And they wouldn't let him. Oh my but god! But he, he basically he hired Toby Hooper and then insisted on being on the set every day and changing half his stuff and <laughs> being a full... yeah. This this absolutely felt like a Spielberg. Film. Oh yeah, yeah. For for the record though, for the record though, I pulled a, I pulled the the credits and cast list and all that stuff off the uh, IMDb page and they list yeah. Spielberg. So I was going off yeah. what they got. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, IMDb is biased here, not me. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, the cast includes uh, James Karen, Zelda Rubenstein, or Rubenstein, however you want to pronounce that, uh, Richard Lawson, Martin Casella, 
uh, Virginia Kaiser, or, or Kisser? That's no, Kaiser. Uh, Michael McManus, uh, Heather O'Rourke, Oliver Robbins, Dominique uh, Dune, uh, Beatrice Strait, Joe Beth Williams, and Mr. Incredible himself, Craig T. Nelson. Damn, that was the voice of Mr. Incredible. <laughs> oh, I, I've, I've seen him, I've seen him in other like like movies, but I I did not match the voice until you just said that. Perfect. This, this shows our age difference. To you guys, he's Mr. Incredible. To me, he's Coach. Coach, <laughs> Coach from Please be Coach. Mm. Nice. TV show in the 80s. Gotcha, He gotcha. played a high school football coach. He was on for like eight years. <laughs> That's what he'll always be to me. Yeah, Incredibles is where I go to, but, I mean, I saw that movie like, what, eight, four times in theaters? It was ridiculous when I saw that. <laughs> that, that was that was a formative film for me. The Incredibles? Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's kids' first Watchmen, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's kids' first <laughs> Watchmen. <laughs> oh, wonderful. I love it. Uh, this movie has some awards. Not as many as some of the movies we talked about, but it's got some. Uh, it's got one BAFTA for a uh, Best Visual Effects and uh, three Saturn Awards for Best Horror Film, Best Supporting Actress, and Best Makeup. That's it. That's all I got. So on to the fun facts here. Ryan, what do you got for us this week? All right. Well, during all the horrors that proceeded while filming Poltergeist in 1982, only one scene really scared Heather O'Rourke. That in which she had to hold on to the headboard while a wind machine blew toys or into the closet uh, behind her. The young actress fell apart. Producer Steven Spielberg stopped everything, took her in her ar- took her in his arms, and said that she would not have to do that scene again. I was particularly wondering how the hell they did that scene because that was that was not nonsense. That looked like nonsense, but I'm glad she's okay. <laughs> uh, next up. Uh, Joe Beth Williams was hesitant about shooting the swimming pool scene because of the large amount of electrical equipment positioned over and around the pool. In order to comfort her, Steven Spielberg crawled (laughs) into the pool with her to shoot the scene. Spielberg told her, now, if a light falls in, we'll both fry. The strategy worked, and Williams got into the pool. (laughs) Like, we're not going to risk Steven Spielberg on on a a, a random shot. So, come on, get in the pool. I see a theme going on here. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, hey, I can respect Spielberg for at least putting himself also in harm's way for, like, to get his actors to do shit. Like, that, that, like, he's made it, he's, he's, he's there with them. That, 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 I can, I can, I can appreciate that. All right. So, last but not least, uh, well, when Robbie, Oliver Robbins, uh, is being strangled, the clown's arms became extremely tight and Robbins started to choke. When he screamed out, I can't breathe! Director Steven Spielberg and Toby Hope, uh, Hooper thought the boy was just ad-libbing and instructed him to look at the camera. When Spielberg saw Robbins' face turning purple, he ran over and removed the clown's arms from Robbins' neck. neck. Incidentally, both of the terrors that plague Robbie came from the director's Spielberg's own fear, fear as a child, the fear of clowns, and a tree outside of his window. Yeah, this is definitely a Spielberg movie, hands down. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, this is 100% a Spielberg movie. This is absolutely a Spielberg movie. Um, but yeah. Alright, so gentlemen, we got, uh, let's get some initial thoughts, yeah? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll go to kind of space out between me here and the synopsis, uh, I always enjoy a good classic Spielberg film. This is not his magnum opus that was Jurassic Park, the greatest horror, drama, action, comedy, and documentary of all time. But, 100%. but uh, this is a solid work from Spielberg and less stepping outside of his usual genre. Really appreciated it. Yeah, this, uh, this movie screams my childhood. <laughs> uh, the Boy's Bedroom. Aside from the clown, which would have never existed in my life. Absolutely ever. not. Absolutely but not. I had all those Star Wars toys. Yep. In the eighties. I had every one of them. Uh that that's my bedroom in the eighties. <laughs> so and even the, the things like the T V turning off after a certain time where it just goes to static, which doesn't happen anymore, but did in the eighties when I was a kid. Now it's just infomercials. Or after a certain yeah, now it's, it might as well go to static at this point. <laughs> might as well. Yeah. So yeah, this 
this I've always had a soft spot for this movie because it just screams my childhood. <laughs> oh man. Well, um, so this is the first time that I've actually seen this movie. Brand Ooh. new to me. Um, so, but it was it definitely like screamed Spielberg. It absolutely like everything about it screams Spielberg. And I love that uh, throughout this year we've been seeing a lot of movies from directors who are who step outside of their normal body of work to do something like off genre. Uh-huh. So we saw, you know, like we saw Chris Christopher Nolan's war film, Dunkirk. Um, and so this is like this is Steven Spielberg's horror film. He doesn't usually do it, but we want to see it. We want to see if he can pull it off. And um, I, I enjoyed it. I felt like it was maybe a little campy for a horror film, but it was still Still classic Spielberg, and I love that shit. So, yeah, I, I definitely really enjoyed this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, There's going to be nothing but praise, I imagine, going forward, but uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it, how it pans out. I've got a synopsis for you here. Are you gentlemen ready? Yes. 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 Yep. Ahem. In another cookie-cutter, white-ass neighborhood, weird stuff seems to be happening over at the Freelings. Uh, most notably, their youngest daughter is sleepwalking and talking to the TV. They don't think uh, they don't think to seek for professional help for their daughter until after ghosts make their presence known, and their daughter disappears into the TV herself. Seems like someone's been playing a little bit too much Persona Four. Oh my uh, God, the Persona. <laughs> <laughs> the family calls. The family calls in uh, the help of a parapsychologist. Wait, there's three. Oh, parapsychologist. Uh, the family calls uh, some doctors from a made-up profession to do science shenanigans <laughs> to pull their daughter out of the Midnight Channel. Uh, the para what's it's uh, get spooked and uh, all but one vacate the pa- uh, home in panic. Mr. Freely has to talk to his boss uh, about his feelings, and we get a small snippet of uh, the at most of the suburban hell is built on the land that was once a cemetery. That'll be important later. Just just you wait. <laughs> uh, when the parakeets return, they bring uh, Tangela Barons, a tiny woman who is uh, our Lorraine Warren for this film. I, for the for just sidebar, I wrote Elizabeth Warren in the original script, and I had to look it up. I'm like, wait, that doesn't sound right. I'm like, oh wait, nope, I got that mixed up. <laughs> My bad. Or Elizabeth Warren, really? <laughs> uh, with their powers, they might be able to perform a rescue operation and pull the daughter out of the Midnight Channel before she is consumed by the spirits. Thus, the tiny woman says, "This house is clean. That'll be ten thousand uh, dollars." But the spirits insist on extending the runtime another fifteen or twenty minutes. So the, the so more spooky shenanigans ensue, including killer clown dolls, a closet that thinks it's Kirby, and a pool full of skeletons. Mister Freeling comes to realize that this uh, construction company he works for has moved uh, the tombstones from the former cemetery, but not the bodies. Uh, told you that would be relevant at some point. Uh, the family leaves the house implodes, and Mister Freeling pushes their hotel room TV out to be stolen and vandalized because he stopped giving a fuck. No more TV. No more TV for this family ever. We're done. We're they're they're going to go Amish. They're going to go Amish. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no ghosts in Amish country, I'll tell you what. Is there a horror Amish movie? I got to look this up now, actually. Jordan Amish. Peele, get on that shit. Get <laughs> on that shit. Amish. There's got to be one. Horror movie. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I've... it's Children of the Corn. Oh, what am I saying? They weren't <laughs> Amish. They weren't Amish. Uh, they were kids. No, Aww. they're just kids. I guess the village kind of counts if you want to call it a horror movie, I guess. Uh, it's not a horror movie. Uh, let's see. Where the, uh, the devil... <laughs> there, there's Where the Devil Hides. There's Deadly Blessing. There's The Harvesting. Uh, oh, the here we go. Harvesting. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Amish Witches, the true story of Holmes County. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's very true. About as true as Amityville, I imagine. Yeah, exactly. So oh, here we go. The Shunning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta see what this is. Is that the direct uh, video release making fun of, like, The Shining? I don't know. <laughs> What's that company that does those movies? Uh, let's see, it's 2011. It was directed by Michael Landon Jr. Uh, do I have any other information? Let's see. Uh, beautiful Katie Lapp has always felt something missing from her simple Amish existence. Mysterious English. Oh wait, there's more. I gotta expand the window. Until a mysterious Englisher comes to Lancaster County looking for the baby girl she gave up for adoption 19 years ago. This is a horror movie. This That's not a- horror. It doesn't sound like a horror movie. Oh what the my fuck? god! <laughs> what the fuck is this? Uh, 
baby. Like, that's not a horror movie. Fuck you, Google. You lied to me. Sounds like a Lifetime movie. A very bad Lifetime movie. Anyway, uh, we have a movie we're talking about here. Totally not that one. <laughs> uh, I love it when we get sidetracked. Guys, what do you think of Poltergeist? Good movie? Bad movie? What do you think? It's a good movie. What do you no, it's so question. fun. It, it it's definitely it's 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 a very fun movie. It's a very fun movie. I even love like the subtle humor. Like uh, I think one of my favorite jokes is when the the paranormal people first show up and they're going through the house and uh, the other Ryan is stating <laughs> how they how they spent all day recording a Matchbox car go like seven feet. And he's like, it took all day. And you can't see it with the perceptible eye, but we've got it on a video that's moving. Yeah, we've got, like, we've, we've got this shit on video. Yeah, the like, dad's like, oh yeah, and then he opens the door and everything's flying around the bedroom. The Hulk is riding He-Man's... That was great. ...cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's just the... At, they, at that point, they just gave zero fucks anymore. They just wanted it to stop. You're like, that's cute. Wait. Take a look at this. Wait, wait so <laughs> if, if, if Hulk is riding... Now fix the... this shit. If Hulk is riding that cat, is this a prequel to uh, Ready Player One? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the book wasn't written yet, so I think he might have some uh, litigation on his hands if that's the case. Uh, it's like The Simpsons. He's clairvoyant. He could see the future. He knew it was going to happen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone could see the future when they have 8,000 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay, okay, I got some questions here for you, uh, if you guys are ready to dive in. Uh, yes. First one, why did they take Carolina therapy? Because you didn't do that in the 80s? I mean, I, I, guess, that's, I guess that's true. <laughs> you didn't, you just figured your kid was precocious. My kid is special, okay? <laughs> my, my kid's special, you, yeah. can't, you can't treat him this way. Yeah, they're... It, I think it's kind of funny, because they make the the parents, like... He's reading a book about Reagan, <laughs> and she's smoking a joint, and is kind of a hippie. But neither one of them are like arch on either side. Like he's not a horrible. Like you're always afraid of these type of movies. Like you're gonna have to spend the whole movie trying to convince the dad it's real, or the parents aren't gonna be good. This movie wastes no time doing any of that. <laughs> yeah. They're like he sees the thrill immediately. Both. The parents are great parents <laughs> they truly care about their kids they don't disappear from the movie uh it's kind of great but yeah i just think in the 80s you just one in this movie they weren't gonna waste time doing that i don't think mm. the runtime was probably already a little high for this type of yeah. movie so i don't think i think they just saw her as precocious <laughs> also i think the the like 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 proof of concept that there were fucking ghosts in the house was established pretty quickly with like the chair scene, because like like when when he when when she looks back and she sees all the chairs pushed, I was just like, didn't I tell y'all to fucking like do the thing? And she puts it back. Camera goes out of frame for a moment, comes back, and the chairs are fucking stacked to a high heaven. It's just like, well, this little girl did not do that. One hundred percent, she did not do that. So something fucking crazy is happening here. Unless so she's I feel not a like the, girl. unless she's not a little girl. Yes, unless this is orphan and they just managed to to give birth to a thirty year old Russian woman. Thank you, Aaron. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, they also had the fun ghost slide. Yeah, <laughs> the fun ghost. playing with the ghosts. I swear here, to God. If, if there was anything spooky happening in my kitchen, I would not be putting my daughter on the fucking floor with it. Like, all right, now, go over there. You're going to catch her. Wait, what? Yep. Why does she have the helmet on? I've never wow, seen. What I've, are you doing? I've never seen a horror movie where the people play with the ghosts. It was a really weird, kind of a, 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 a heartwarming scene, but really weird. Well, I think what they were trying to go for is that not every one of the ghosts at the house was bad. It was yeah. really just one. <laughs> yeah, that they was were, kind they of were, bad. That was holding them all there. They were really playing with the concept of like, like, there is a bit of wonder of the unknown. Like, like, you know, even the horrible shit was happening. There was still a bit of it that was like we're in contact 
we're in like direct physical contact with stuff that has not been proven yet but it's like this is proof that life exists beyond death and there's a part of that realization that's wondrous and so you got to like rather than like because horror like always just like dwells in like the 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 terribleness of that but like Spielberg really wanted to play with the like the imagination and the wonder that comes with the fact that yeah life goes on after you die and we we have proof of that now and it's really really cool like uh, instead of just automatically throwing you into the terrible shit so I while it was weird I did appreciate that he he wanted to explore that a little bit well, that, that's kind of his thing, though. Like, again, referencing the greatest movie of all time, Jurassic Park. Uh, of course. Yep. Yeah, uh, he uh, uses the same kind of mixture of wonder and terror for, for the dinosaurs. Like, you're in awe of, like, these creations that have just come on screen, both in the narrative and in the technical aspects of the film. I mean, by God, it hasn't been done that well ever, and I don't think it has since. But, um, yeah. but um, then you are met with the realization of, oh, Yes, these things are amazing, wonderful, and crazy, but also they're going to kill us and eat us because that's the other half of the film. And that's sort of what's happening here a little bit. You have that mixture of realization of just how wonderful and fantastical these ghosts are, but also, oh, hey, they're going to eat us. I mean, possess us or something. I don't know. What do ghosts All right, do? So, so Poltergeist is Ghost Jurassic Park. You guys heard it here first <laughs> from, from the word of Aaron. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have Jeff Goldblum, so it's not as good, but, I mean, it's it's all right. I mean, but it does have Mr. Incredible, though. Ooh. But it's not Jeff Goldblum, though. <laughs> I know. I'm not saying... Well, I'm not saying it's better. I'm just saying... It's good. It, it's does, good. it does have merit. It does have merit. I never said it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um. <laughs> love it when we get on those weird tangents there. Uh. What is your thoughts regarding the whole cemetery burial ground trope? Man, they love that in the 70s and 80s. They just (laughs) really love that. Uh, My biggest question about it first was, he's like, you removed the gravestones, but not the bodies. Well, bodies are only six feet down. How the hell did they dig all, all the foundations of these houses? But then I remembered it's California. There are no basements. Oh, you're really in not. California. I didn't know that. No, because oh. of the earthquakes, they don't have basements in California. I guess that so, makes sense. Oh, that so makes sense. then it made more sense. I'm like, okay, I suppose technically it's possible. Although, surely they would have hit a few because you're going to naturally go down. I'm like, like, come on. I, mean, just, I know government officials are bloated and out of control, but surely someone's like, hey, you can't just move the headstones there are caskets there <laughs> and I, I love the scene where he's trying to bribe him to stay with the company with where his new house will be and, and behind, it's literally and behind right it is next all to the freaking cemetery <laughs> he's like well the neighbor the backyard neighbors are kind of uh, scary and it's a whole cemetery he's like yeah that won't be there that long <laughs> I'm like what the hell I thought it was a I thought it was a very very in- interesting uh like like a uh, uh, critique on uh the uh the uh the quote unquote American dream as it stands like in the, in the 80s and like even today I mean like these 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 uh these suburban uh cookie cutter homes that literally, like, I can't tell these houses apart. Like, yeah, that's the fucking point. Um, so it's just like these, like, wide swaths of suburbia that um, we're just tearing through. Like, it starts out um, showing, like, the kind of, like, the simple j- joys of suburbia because, like, like honestly, like, like the, the shenanigans and just the peaceful, quiet, and just, like, and, like, having your buddies for a game and, like, Having like the, the 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 TV remote fights with your neighbor. I mean, this this is suburbia. This is absolutely suburbia. And like, there's a part part of it 
of that that feels warm and safe and comfortable to well, to some people. But they then, like over the course of the movie, they show like how, how what is warm and safe for y'all comes at the expense of the people that came before it, and how all of this quote unquote progress is really paving over like some horrible, horrible shit and how that's eventually going to come due. Like I thought that was really, really interesting for, for Spielberg to be to be to be tackling. So I'm I'm glad he he had, had like the the central sin of the movie being suburbia, not uh, suburbia just like forcing out or like roving over the people that came before it in the name of progress. I mean, isn't that kind of a metaphor for America in general? Well, yeah, one hundred percent. But I'm surprised that big name Spielberg tackled that shit back in the eighties. Like, I, I really, I mean, I'm, really, I really enjoy that. I'm, I'm pretty not sure that's su- all, all of Western civilization. Maybe, maybe, but I maybe. mean, I'm not surprised though. I mean, this is the same director who took on Schindler's List. Fair. And, I mean, again, it's not Jurassic Park, but it is considered a widely per- a great film by, by by a lot of people, so, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so here's how badly that trope affects me. So many of my movies growing up had this cemetery trope, usually a native mm-hmm. cemetery trope, that my dad has a camper in northern Minnesota in the Chippewa Valley Forest on an Indian reservation. Mm-hmm. They have a trail I walk, it's like three miles it goes to the start of a river well the trail goes right through an Indian burial ground like directly through the middle of it so I stopped at the edge of this and like yeah I've seen this movie <laughs> so I walked I walked all the way around and then got back on the trail well when I got back I was talking to the guys the the natives that ran the place I'm like do you want people walking through that I'm like, yeah, yeah of course we do that's why we put the trail through there he goes he goes you're thinking that stupid movie trope aren't you I'm like yes <laughs> and he goes think of it this way do you walk through your cemeteries I'm like yeah all the time he goes do any malevolent spirits superpower over you yep all the time <laughs> no then why would it happen in ours our dead people are the same as your dead people <laughs> there's no specialized powers and once you brought that to like, yeah you're, you're, good point <laughs> I, don't, I think I just I could be just some desensitized that way as much as I can at not being scared. See here, so so here's the thing that 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 surprises me though because I don't usually go around through cemeteries or like when I go into cemeteries, it's for the express purpose of visiting the cemetery. You know, no. like I don't I don't walk trails or like uh, like like take jogging paths to take me through a cemetery. Oh, lots of people do though. But especially here in the Midwest, like, That's, especially uh, in Iowa. People walk their dogs. Yeah, yeah people walk their dogs, uh, go for jogs. It's, like, really? I've heard, I've heard some people say, well, that's what we want when we're buried. We don't want to just be left out there <laughs> to rot with no one ever coming oh. by. We want people to visit, feed the ducks. They have a duck pond there. Let your tongue chase the ducks. So, yeah, that it, maybe it's a Midwest thing. I don't know. I don't remember if people did it in Aurora or Denver, but the cemeteries are so out of the way there it's not quite the same that's so interesting yeah yeah R- R- ryan if you're ever back in town i'll show you the one that's actually nearby our place uh i'm sure derek's familiar with it so it's, it's uh the one uh just behind franklin library yep i yep. walk it all the time my dad lives over by there yep uh <laughs> I, I i used to walk uh through that one with my mom and dad all the time because they'd walk their dog through there and it's got a lot of good hills and everything so i mean it's, it's a good place to get a good exercise in <laughs> I like how he just blew his mind at that one. So, so I'm, I'm sorry. This is this, this is this is actually blowing my mind because like now I'm vividly remembering a scene from like the first season of House of Cards where uh, like Frank Underwood's wife was jogging and she like constantly jogged through like a cemetery and like on like one of her times through it, like an old lady was like, "Have you no respect for the dead? What are you doing?" <laughs> jogging through here and she was like oh shit and she like like left and then she like changed her route so that she didn't just run through the cemetery so that's very interesting i i i will confess ignorance on that one because i, I i've never heard anyone being upset by that before that's weird to me yeah <laughs> me neither i've heard um, people being upset like if your dog's are unleashed 
Or if you let them poop and you don't pick it up. Or if you piss on someone's grave. I mean, I could see yeah. someone being mad about that, too. I mean... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, that I, you, not that I've done you, it before. <laughs> usually you stick to the pavement. You're not walking over people's graves. You you stick to the pavement. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, and like, like that that's the same thing that was happening in, like, the episode. But, like, it was... It still, like, stuck out, so... Wow. Okay. Burn, burn Shit. I, I learned something new today. <laughs> Um, okay, so we talked about this a little bit already. This movie's a little outside Spielberg's usual wheelhouse. How do you think he tackled horror? And what other director would you be interested to see try a genre outside their normal... their, their normal? Well, let me put it this way. I let my, my wife watch this movie with me. Yep. When I watched it last week. She does not watch horror. But I knew this one would be fine. Because it's Spielbergian horror. <laughs> You know nobody's really in any danger because he's unlikely to build up a body count. It's Spielberg, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, no one dies. Uh, that's not already dead. Uh, <laughs> but tell that does... to, tell that to the lawyer who is in the bathroom. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> he got beat up. he got what he deserved. I mean, no, no doubt. Oh yeah, he's a lawyer, obviously. <laughs> obviously, I meant in this horror movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I think he did a good job because obviously I like it uh, and there, there should be all types of horror I don't want it to all be Friday the 13th, 18 teenagers die because uh, uh, you can't introduce your kids to horror that way you need to, at least you should unless you're going to make them become me <laughs> you should start them out lighter with things like Poltergeist and I don't know Stranger Things now, or something like that, Stranger where it's not, good. yeah, yeah, where it's not, you know, you're not just throwing them in Friday Thirteenth Part Six or Nightmare on Elm Street Four, where you're gonna scar them. They can build up to that when they're a teenager. But no, I think he did a good job as far as a director that doing a genre that he doesn't normally do. I, I think I'm gonna have to go with a director I'd like to see make a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Just I would like to see. Let's see. Let's see. My favorite directors. Danny Boyle kind of did one. You guys covered it. Uh, I guess maybe Nolan. I'd be kind of interested to Damn, see what he you was doing. Stole my be, answer. That would be interesting, you actually. Stole yeah. my answer. Well, unfortunately, most of my favorite directors do horror, like Ari Aster, David Eggers. <laughs> they've all done horror movies. Like, so I guess I could go. Let's see an Ari Aster comedy. <laughs> I'd be interested to see what that looks like. That could but, be interesting. <laughs> and I think that's what he's making next, so <laughs> stay tuned. But uh, I'm sure it'll be four hours long. Probably. But yeah, sorry for stealing you guys' thunder, but yeah, Nolan would definitely be mine. I, I, I've got one, Ryan, if you want no, me that's, to... No, that's a good answer. That's why I was going to say that. I say I got one, Ryan, if you want to think of another one real quick. but uh... I, 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 do, I do have a second runner-up okay, okay. because it's just ridiculous. Uh, so, so for for the first part of the answer, um, I definitely think it's very interesting. You know, like we talked about directors going off, off genre like a lot this year, which is really really cool. It's kind of like our unofficial our unofficial theme of this year. You know, like seeing well known actors tackle different genres, which I like. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this first stab at it was definitely very good. Um, it uh, like like. He, he's mastered the jump scare, which was great for injury level horror. Um, <laughs> but he also managed to maintain his, uh, you know, like like the, the Spielbergian feel of it and just like the, the, the sheer wonder that kind of like, like goes throughout all of his films. Like I have a feeling that wonder is like the quintessential part of what he feels when he's making films and when he wants to tell stories. So that's like the biggest thing that carries through in all of his shit, or at least in most of his shit. And so I I definitely think this film carries that feeling and it, it carries it in a good way because it's it's very warm and welcoming, but it also hits classic horror like tropes and beats so it makes you feel like you're kind of straddling the line 
Um, I was tempted to say that it doesn't really feel like horror because of that, uh, but Derek really makes a great point. This is kind of like entry-level horror, where you can introduce your kids into it and they will get the feeling of it, but it's still like a controlled environment. It's still safe, it's still like fun, and it's not like a watered down horror movie where it's just boring, but like you get the scariness and you get the feeling of warmth and security. It's almost like a step up from Goosebumps. I think a that's bit. a definite It is. It really is. It'd be like Goosebumps, Poltergeist, then you can start like tap Tackling, like the hard shit, like like once you've mastered those, like there there are probably some steps in between of that that I'm missing. Uh, but like like I'm sure y'all can y'all can fill in those steps. But like yeah, I can see that absolutely. In terms of director that I would want to see, uh, Derek took mine because I would absolutely be interested in seeing a Nolan horror film 100. So I'm gonna go with the opposite end of the spectrum and go with the most ridiculous. I want to see a Michael Bay horror film. Oh, God. I want to see what he would do. We kind of have. With what? Oh. His, his production company and he executive produced both the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street and the remake of Friday the 13th. Oh. But he didn't direct them. So. He probably wants something more original, too. Oh, there's no explosions. Yeah. 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 I, want, I, want yeah, I, want, I, yeah. I agree with you. That would be interesting. Um, so I'm going to do the opposite of the spectrum. So I know we're talking about our directors jumping into horror. So I'm going to take a horror director and have him try something outside that box there. Okay, we know, let's do it. We know, he see, we know he can do horror. He's done one extremely well. Uh, we know he can do comedy. That's what his career is all about. I want to see Jordan Peele take on a superhero action film. Keanu doesn't count? Keanu. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 it's action parody, sure, but <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe. But I'm thinking more like your 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 DC Marvel level superhero films, so to speak. Oh my god! Okay, Jordan Peele Avengers. I need it. They gave <laughs> one to Joss Whedon. Let's see Jordan Peele rock this. He's a master of dialogue. He's really good at it. I want to see him pull it off. I think he could do it. I think I, 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 that would be very interesting. Like, like, g- give him a what if. Give him like a Marvel Zombies or some shit. Oh, that, that would be fun. That'd be fun. that'd be a good compromise. Oh that, my I, god, I, I, Jordan I, Peele doing Marvel Zombies. Actually, that that really works. I would one hundred percent watch that. Go on the ludicrous area and say, can Adam Sandler make a horror movie? Mm. Oh god, I just don't know if it'd be no. any good. I just don't know if it'd be any good. <laughs> The only reason I'd watch it is to see all of his friends die. Mm, do you have my attention? Wow. Can I see like David Spade get killed, <laughs> Rob shot. Schneider get killed? You have my attention. Because <laughs> you know they're all going to be in the movie. Because that's every one yeah. of his movies. Yeah. At least the ones he writes and directs. I say it's still have to see Uncut Gem. It's I good. Say... It's actually pretty good. <laughs> I'd say it's that Zack Snyder horror uh, film, but uh, we kind of already got that, didn't we? Yeah, he he remade uh, Dawn of the Dead, which was really good. It was really good. That was his first movie, yep. and yeah. he knocked it out of the park with that one. That was pretty. It's good. probably his best movie. <laughs> he, <laughs> like, I mean, I I think I think horror really, um, I think horror really does well with um, a great visual style, and Zack Snyder, for all his faults is really, really good at the visual aesthetics of a movie. Uh-huh. So putting him on a horror film makes a lot out of sense. Yeah, the the opening 25 minutes of that movie is excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Like the overhead shots following her car through the mayhem. That's all excellent. If you want to hear our thoughts on, on Dawn of the Dead, hey, there's a link over there to, ta- to see our video where we talked about both Dawn of the Deads. It's it's over yonder. We've done them both. Go go give them a listen. At the we same time, no less. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan, Derek, I have another question here for you. Uh, Please. Do you feel like this family had good chemistry? Why or why not? I think the parents did. The 
the older daughter might as well not even be in the movie. She's Honestly. barely there. Uh, <laughs> basically, she's there for, like, 80s tropes, for, like, the construction workers to hoot and holler at while her mom smiles pleasingly when her daughter fingers them. It's like, okay, uh, that you'd probably fire those guys. Uh, <laughs> Oh, my husband's employee yeah, sexually harassing my daughter. Those, those construction workers should yep. have been so In the hard. 80s, you just, that was your training ground for your daughter how to deal with men. Uh, wow. The, the little girl's not in it a whole bunch, except her voice. Because she's gone through a lot of the movie. True. So it's really the two parents. And the boy. And, and the boy. But really, the interact the large part of the interactions are the two parents and the random adults that come through their lives. Uh, that go through it. Uh, funny thing about that is if you pay attention in the movie they, they did a rewrite in the script but they didn't change something that they really needed to change oh she was originally supposed to be his second wife mm. oh and the older and the older daughter was a kid from a previous marriage because if you do the math she had it when she was, was like 15 16 she no younger really like, four, like 14 which means he married so they but they it was supposed to be different but they didn't bother to change the ages so she's only 30 so if you do the math like i had another podcast talk about this what? like hold uh on, hold on because hold on, I, I actually i actually like like noticed this when he said like she was 32 and i was pretty sure the daughter was 16 yeah, so that so means she would have had her when she was 16 yeah 16 but she got pregnant when she was 15 and yeah. probably with 15 else at 14 <laughs> so yeah that was a little a slip up in the old uh screenplay but That's i like interesting i thought it was intentional honestly no, i thought God, it was intentional no. in a spielberg movie uh I no mean, uh, if, we're, high if we're gonna talk about suburbia that yeah but he's like but he's not 32 <laughs> he's mm -hmm. in his 40s 40s yeah. at this time so no, oh, shit, no not a spielberg oh, movie oh, oh that's yeah. creepy that's but, real creepy i thought yeah, that's now that now that i really think about old craig T. Nelson actually was. Yeah, that's probably that's pretty bad. Uh, granted, that's a Hollywood thing that still happens. But mm -hmm. maybe make the daughter younger <laughs> if you're going to keep him as married. But yeah, the, I thought they they did, had great chemistry together. I like Joe Beth Williams and Craig T. Nelson in this as a husband and wife. They're very believable. Honestly, I think Craig T. Nelson fits like, in uh, really like, well uh, with honestly, anybody. Almost. He's 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 so affable. He's so he's so affable. But honestly, it was the uh, it was the like her smoking weed and like him like reminiscing on the fucking like like the, like his days as a diver. I was just like, this is really cool. Like I I, I buy this. I I buy like they put the kids to bed. She's smoking. Like he's reading. They're just fucking chilling out. They're just fucking jamming. This feels good. It feels like a like a a an idyllic home like an ideal like suburban household like so that 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 one scene really pulled it together for me i think they had great chemistry those two gotcha gotcha uh let's see what are your thoughts regarding the paranormal experts <laughs> which <laughs> ones uh, were, 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 were there experts in the, no, there was one expert in this show. <laughs> the other three were fanboys. They were just like, "Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look and see if we can get." Oh shit! There are actual ghosts in this house. Oh god. <laughs> they, I mean, they were kind of there for a little bit of comic relief. It, uh, it worked. It worked to break some of the tension. Yeah, yeah, to break some it of the worked. tension. Oh yeah, I enjoyed them. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed them. Uh, it's her. I had. A, a problem with Zelda. Oh yeah, the <laughs> diminutive Jewish woman. Uh, she claims the house is clean, so she gets the worst Yelp review in history. One hundred percent. I'm like, <laughs> as soon as she said that, I looked at the runtime and was like, "Bitch, there are twenty <laughs> minutes left. This house ain't clean at all." Cancel you the check. You are a liar. You're not getting paid. And she's back in the other two movies. Like she's the only clear through for all three movies but uh, her and the little girl unfortunately oh but, no to the third one uh, but no I mean you need side characters you needed you needed an outside presence not just the family 
to also witness it. So as far as I went, I thought they worked. Yeah, I. I mean, it was like I think they also. I think it also like really leaned more on the 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 wonder aspect of it because you had these people that were not expecting to see like the amount of activity that was happening, but the lady was still like, like. I'm my mind is blown right now. Like this has always been a hobby, but I've believed, and now to see concrete evidence of life after death, I'm scared shitless, but I'm amazed. And I'm like, that's really nice. Like that, that's really cool. So yeah, they they served. They wore a couple of hats in this movie, and I like them there. Hey, did anyone else have a question? Like the the non Ryan helper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember his name. You 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 mean old boy that saw his his face melt off? Yeah. In the in the, yeah. When he walks into their fridge, and just starts taking all the food out of their fridge to eat, like the steak that's not on a plate or anything, just sitting in the fridge. Uh, was, is he gonna is he gonna make that on top of the stove? Like what the hell's going on? <laughs> I just... honestly, as as soon as he did that, I was like, this isn't your house, dog. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just gonna. Fry the steak on top of the stove, and we'll just well. That's why he's eat your puni- shrimp. It's why he's punished. They take his face off. Exactly. Yep. I'd like to take his face. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's uh, two. Sorry. That's two for two. Two for two. Love it. Every time, dude. If you tee me up like that, I'm gonna take. It. Ah, the John Woo classic. <laughs> um. Uh, where am I? At? Uh. What is the most impressive visual effect you saw in this film? Because this is a Spielberg thing. He is very good at his visual effects. Mm. I really like the pool scene. Oh, with all the skeletons? Yeah. That's pretty when solid. She's, when she's trapped in the pool and can't get out. I've always been a practical effects type of person. So those are the ones that affect me the most. So that's, that's one I really liked. Ryan, how about you? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say the tree almost eating the kid. <laughs> that was nonsense. I could not have believed that was going to happen. It's just like, all right, and then big arms reach into your window and snatch the kid, and now he's gonna be swallowing the kid in the tree. And then the tree gets taken up in our again. I'm like, what the fuck is actually happening? And the fact that this was all a a, a distraction so that they could pull the little girl into the portal was was mwah. yeah no that 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 gets my vote that gets my vote. Um, I will probably have to swing for the uh, the the closet itself just be that big fucking sucking vacuum thing. Um, that was pretty cool how they did it, especially when you hear the backstory behind like what happened there, which is pretty pretty sweet on Spielberg there. But uh, definitely a, a, a soft spot for the skeleton pool because you, Ryan, you know me, skeletons, they're my thing. Ske- skeletons, man, skeletons. Yeah. Like, 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 like to, to like no shade cast on that. That is like there were a, a lot of like amazing special effects like for the for its time like. Spielberg's absolutely a master at this shit. So, like, like all of this shit was 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 really really awesome to see. But okay. if we're talking favorites, then we have our own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a question. Yeah. So, when their house, spoilers, when their house gets sucked into the ground, <laughs> why don't all the other houses get sucked into the ground? Theirs wasn't the only one built on this. Like, why is theirs the only one that's haunted? I actually the whole have neighborhood. A is built on the damn cemetery. Ryan's got a film theory. I have a film theory on this. I think it's the the I think it's the the fact that Craig Nelson's character is like the person responsible for selling like almost half of the land. So this guy is literally the face of the company that's given away almost half of the land of this burial ground. Mm-hmm. I think that's the one, like the factor that that make them focus on his house. But at the end, they do start like they're blowing up all the fire uh, water mains throughout the neighborhood. 
Oh yeah, the whole the up. whole fucking place is haunted. The whole place is haunted. <laughs> but I think if it was gonna start anywhere, if it was gonna to fuck with one family in particular I definitely understand why it was his because he's literally he's like if you take the entire company responsible for this travesty and put it into one person it's the guy that's in people's faces selling plots of this land and responsible for selling like half of it yeah that makes sense to me uh, final final question here did this movie need a remake? Why or why not? <laughs> no. God. No. Have I didn't even know it? there was a remake. It doesn't. It didn't need to exist. Which this sucks. is a classic. Which sucks because the remake, the actors in it are really good. Like it's it's uh, shoot, what's his name? I'll look it up. From I gotta look this shit up. Uh, Sam on. Sam Rockwell. Oh yeah, Sam Rockwell. Sam right. Rockwell. Yeah, it, the actors are great, but they took it, it became a straight horror movie. And that's that's not how this movie works. It needs to be Spielbergian. Otherwise, it's just cheesy. <laughs> and I, I need that Spielberg wonder. And no, it was completely unnecessary. Aww, yeah, man. It's, it's yeah, it's that. Oh, it was Sam Raimi. What yeah. are you doing, Sam? Yeah. Come on, dog. No. Make it funny. <laughs> oh, boo. Who is? Yeah, I think this like this this movie primarily exists as like the kind of the entryway between like adventure and horror because it definitely has those adventure like kind of characteristics to it where like you have to seek the wise old mentor to come and like and, and, like guide you through and then you have to pass through the threshold you have to enter the spirit realm. And you have to do things you never thought you would have to do in order to save your daughter from the fucking spirits and fucking burial grounds and shit. Like, like yes, this, this, like it, it's definitely it definitely straddles that line. And I think like Spielberg did a really great job of capturing like the best of both of adventure and horror. If you just try to make it a horror, like Derek said, it, it becomes cheesy as fuck. And uh, I'm sad. I'm sad they did that. I'm sad. I am also sad. Mm. because Ryan the, the episode's coming to an end here soon and if you want to su su support our show you go to patreon.com slash cast productions you can also uh, follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook to reach out to us directly did you see the remake of this movie and if so did you bleach your eyes afterward tell us down below in the comments we'd love to know <laughs> your thoughts on that one um, I also didn't know there was a sequel to Poltergeist I'll have to check those out are they any good? there are two of them no <laughs> They're really not. In fact, it's one of the biggest drop-offs you're ever going to see Ooh. between the first one. Because, I mean, none of the, direct, the director, writers, none of them came back. The actors did, for the most part. Uh, obviously, not the oldest sister. Well, they were uh, con, obviously. And they did, yeah, and they didn't even throw her a line. Like, they didn't even say, like, you know, oh, oh she's, she's in died. college. That's why she's not here. You know, <laughs> there, nothing. There's no in memory of. It's <laughs> just like, no, what? Just, she's just gone. <laughs> Uh, what? Oldest daughter? God damn. Yeah. It, there is no oldest daughter, only Zool. And the third one, the parents are gone. On She's living with her uncle, Tom Skerritt, in a high rise. So at this point, the ghosts are just following her, <laughs> the little girl. This poor kid. And it has uh, nothing to do with the original plot. Yeah, exactly. And she died during the filming of the third one. To the point God. where uh, she had to misdiagnose they diagnosed her as some kind of stomach issue and it was actually like some kind of cyst that ended up blowing up and killing her. Hence, I, I believe, I don't know the order of your podcasts, but I, I believe I had a rant in one of our episodes from last week about cursed movies. The shit in, I believe, yes. And my thoughts on people thinking they're cursed. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this God. one is, this series is one of those. Uh, yeah, so no, you don't need to watch either one of them. This is a good one-off story. Well, that's good to know. That way y'all can not waste your time and I won't waste mine. Speaking of not wasting mm -hmm. time, Ryan, what email could they email us all these questions and concerns at? Uh, they can email us at this house is clean. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. 
Uh, that's uh, evaxation at gmail.com. You say his house is clean, but there's porn everywhere. I think it's dirty as shit. Um, anyway. His house is clean, but there's actually 20 minutes left in this podcast. No, I'm just joking. There's not 20 <laughs> minutes left in this podcast. Uh, we should have tied that better. We should have tied it better. Um, <laughs> no, not 20 minutes. We only have maybe 20 seconds left. I'm kidding. To rank the film from platinum to shit to platinum to trash all the codes in between. Gentlemen, what are we ranking Poltergeist 1982? What are we going to rank this at? Eric? Well, he's first. Okay. Uh, you know, you it's, are, yes. it's, it's gold. Uh, it's not perfect. It's not, like like you said, it's not the best Spielbergian film out there. But it's definitely gold. Uh, I enjoy it every time I watch it. Uh, and I like, I like the mix of practical effects to go along with it. I've always been a fan of that kind of effect, so that part, that point in the 80s is always kind of my bread and butter mm-hmm. as a worshipper of like Tom Savini and mm-hmm. things of that nature. I, I like the practical stuff, so this movie's always kind of run out for me. And, and also the fact that it didn't use you know, the Native American trope for its cemetery. It wasn't just the magical natives that were angry at us. It was the corporate greed of the 80s, you know, kind of an American psycho. The magical corporate greed. Well, it's like, yeah, Spielberg's American psycho mm-hmm. for the 80s. Spielberg's so, American psycho. I this is a movie I might watch. <laughs> I'd see Spielberg's American psycho, 100%. Give me, the, give me the Spielberg cut. <laughs> the Spielberg. <laughs> We're not bringing up the Snyder cut again. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to wait to do that podcast later. But although that forced me to watch that movie, but no, I I would say gold. It's gold. Nice. Uh, uh, Ryan, I know traditionally you go next. May, may I step in real quick? Please go for it. So Ryan, Derek, uh, this film is a part of the 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 Spielberg canon. It shares a space in history with films like like Ready Player One, Schindler's List, <laughs> and the greatest film of all time. Jurassic Park. So the question is, since we've already reviewed Jurassic Park, Ryan, how do I compare this to Jurassic Park, the greatest horror, drama, action, comedy, documentary, musical of all time? That is an excellent question. <laughs> There's a song in there somewhere, I think. What? What? We're back. <laughs> Continue. Continue, please. Anyway, anyway, because that'll be a tangent. Um, anyway, so how do I compare this to that, to this to that? I think the answer is simple. You can't. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm having it hard for no reason. Uh, I'm going to say this is a gold. It's the same ballpark, but I think it's not as good as Jurassic Park, per se. But it tries so damn well. It's it's really good at what it does. It's just missing a lot of other elements Jurassic Park brings to the table, but it's still really good. That went all over the place, I know. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I know, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. Uh, so I'm going to be slightly off center. I'm going to be slightly off center. I'm going to give this a gold with an asterisk because, like, my asterisk is that this film, like, like while it's it's a lot of fun, it uh, is definitely a great uh, gateway into horror and it's 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 a spielberg classic like it definitely has like the like elements of spielberg's movies in it i feel like this is a very dated movie like it's good but for people who have no concept of like what 80s suburbia looked like I feel like it might lose some of its magic. So, like, if people are watching this, like, 10 years removed for the first time, 20 years removed for the first time. Oh, like, you. I, like, like, this, mo- like this, this movie, this movie is almost 40 years old. So it's just, like, for people who are just watching this for the very first time and have, like, literally no, n- like, like, no uh, uh, exposure to, like, like, what life was like back then, I wonder how it will hold up in the years to come. That's the asterisk. Yeah. Fair. Fair, fair. Happens. Like, it happened with E.T. Like, yeah. E.T. is not the same for kids nowadays as it was for those of us growing up. 
my funny thing was he was making both of those movies at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> E.T. and this. And both of them turned out great. That is a master at work. Not a lot of people can yeah, do that. Yeah, like one hundred percent. This is this is a this is a great movie. It's so much fun, and like I I had a great time with it. I just I wonder, for people like checking it out, like twenty twenty quarantine, they 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 need something to watch. I wonder how it will hit them, or right. like twenty thirty. If there's a quarantine, God, I hope not. Jesus Christ, twenty forty, like what? Whatever, like the 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 further removed from this way of life, I wonder how it will hit people because it's it's definite it definitely leans into like like Americans perceived way of what the quote unquote idyllic family like like environment would be and how the paranormal plays into that. Well, I'll tell you what, Ryan. You know what movie never has aged ever in a day it's in its life? Jurassic Park. Exactly. I was also gonna say. Yep. Lord of the, I, was, I was also gonna say Lord of the Rings, but Jurassic Park also has not aged a day. It's, Jurassic Park is fucking timeless. Like, <laughs> are either of you even old <laughs> enough to have seen that in a theater? I did. It was the first time I, I saw it in theaters at the yeah, age of four. <laughs> oh, joke. That barely counts. <laughs> We've seen it. Don't take it away from us. I remember seeing that in the theater, and then. My mom and her then husband were shopping around for like a trailer to buy, maybe, and we were at the the place that sell them. And since we visited, they had a whole drawer full of Jurassic Park VHSs that they just handed to people when you oh, came wow. in for a sales call. So nice. I got like the VHS copy hey. from that. I don't have it still. I think I traded that in eons ago. But uh, yeah, so no. But no, no, I, I saw that when I was a kid at, so at, at the age of four because, and I remember because uh, that was literally what kicked me into my dinosaur kick for probably the next five to ten years, uh, just learning all the shit, reading all the shit, just really being into it, and uh, yeah, no, that was that was my jam for ages, so I, I remember that one vividly. That was definitely a great first theater experience. Did you read I'm... the book? Uh, I didn't read it until I was much older because that was definitely a little bit ahead of my uh, my reading level at that well, age. Yeah, four. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, not four. I didn't mean that. Um, love, love the book. Love the book. The sequel, hit or miss, but I think they both do interesting things. I'm I'm not sure if I saw. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't see it in theaters, but I vividly remember like a very young me watching it on VHS, VHS like. Countless, countless times. So yeah, like like Jurassic Park is absolutely a quintessential part of my childhood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Truly, a movie that should be a quintessential part of every kid's childhood. If we're being honest here. <laughs> Honestly, it's a timeless movie. Timeless. It, it's a true timeless movie. And speaking of timeless, we are actually out of time. We've been going for a hey, while. We so. are timeless, as in we have run out of time. <laughs> So thank you for listening to this episode. Next week, Ryan will be recording uh, The Haunting from 1999 and uh, a a movie I threw onto the list last minute that will surprise a lot of people, uh, Suburban Gothic. It, that is a movie. That's all you need what to know. What the hell even is? What? That's all you need to know. Thank you it's for listening. surprise to me too, y'all. We're, we're going to watch it for the first time together. <laughs> thank you for listening, and we'll see you after the credits. Bye. Bye.